Today we're looking at a new high-tech approach to fighting large fires. So we're talking about large fires in urban areas. Yes, a large fire could break out after a natural disaster such as an earthquake, and a prompt response is essential. This fire broke out after the Great East Japan earthquake in 2011. Gas tanks at the petrochemical facility exploded, causing a large-scale fire. It took 10 days until it was put out. Meanwhile, this fire at the warehouse of a major mail-order company occurred in February 2017. This one took 12 days to put out. Once flames break out, it can be hard to extinguish the fire. Very true. In Japan, about 40,000 fires occur annually, resulting in more than 1,500 deaths. The amount of damage is said to be nearly $1 billion. That's a lot of lives that could be saved. Particularly in large-scale fires, there have been cases where firefighters could not get close to the fire source because of the intense heat. So in those cases, how can they extinguish the fire? Well, robot fire brigades equipped with artificial intelligence are now being developed to overcome situations like this. A robot fire brigade with artificial intelligence. That's right. Let's take a closer look at this innovative firefighting system. In April 2017, a public demonstration of a new firefighting system was held. What so many people are staring at are four robots of various shapes and sizes. This is the AI-equipped Robot Fire Brigade. They are largely divided into a team to scout the scene of a fire and a team to handle the firefighting. First, a reconnaissance robot drone gets to work. It's equipped with a camera to grasp the scene of the fire in real time. It also has a heat sensor, which can even detect a fire source indoors. Relying on this sensor, it can automatically determine the source of the fire and fly towards it. Information about the fire confirmed from the sky above is reported to the reconnaissance robot on the ground, which rushes to the scene. It then examines the surroundings. With four kinds of position measuring instruments, such as a rotating laser range finder, plus two kinds of cameras, it can accurately grasp its position and the state of its surroundings. Just in case there are obstacles at the scene of the fire, it can even overcome a difference in level up to 40 centimeters. The robot thinks and acts on its own and gathers various information around the site. This is an image of information on the scene of the fire sent from the reconnaissance robot. The fire source is shown in red. It also shows the wind direction and speed at the site. As a result of its reconnaissance, the robot showed three candidate points, A, B, and C, where water can be efficiently discharged. Also, the yellow path is issued as a route to reach the water discharge point. Humans make the final decision as to which route to use and how far to go after considering the photos taken by the reconnaissance robot. This information is conveyed to the water cannon robot. Then the water cannon robot travels autonomously to the water discharge point together with the hose extension robot. They can get as close as 50 meters from the fire source. When the hose extension robot arrives to the water discharge point, it extends its hose while moving to the fire hydrant. 
order to discharge the water efficiently, it proceeds carefully so that the hose does not twist. One hour after arriving on the scene, it starts discharging water. Its effective range is 70 meters, more than enough to reach the source of the fire. Meanwhile, the two reconnaissance robots monitor the fire for spreading, as well as the temperature of the fire source, lest heat cause an explosion. If the wind direction changes and the water discharged is blown away, the reconnaissance robot will share that information with the water cannon robot. There are plans for the robot to adopt a mechanism that will automatically adjust the water discharge angle. Dr. Hisanori Amano of the National Research Institute of Fire and Disaster led the robot's development. We're now trying to incorporate the highest standards in the country into this robotic system for use in disaster response. And by around spring of 2019, we hope to complete it at a level that can be deployed to firefighting units. Artificial intelligence is entering the field of firefighting as well. In the gas tank fire we saw earlier, firefighters could not get close to the scene until the next day. Yet. With this robot fire brigade, firefighting activity could start one hour after arriving on the scene. That would be great, but is it okay for the robots to get so close to the fire with all the machinery and electronics inside? That's a good question. If the electronic equipment inside were to get too hot, the machinery would break down. That's why a means of withstanding such a harsh environment was developed. Let's look at what that is. This is a custom-made heat-resistant cover developed for the robot. It's made of a special aluminum-coated fiber. Aluminum reflects 95% of the high heat from close range, protecting the robot itself. And there is a secret to the fiber on the back of the aluminum. You can efficiently cool the robot by moisturizing the fiber. I see, so that solves the problem of approaching the fire source. Next, the conventional fire hose nozzle has also been evolving. Let's take a look. This is what it looks like when extinguishing fire with conventional foam. It's effective for oil fires, but there was one problem. Since the foam is lightweight, it can be blown away by the wind. This makes extinguishing a fire difficult if the foam's target is far away. That's why this was developed. The foam doesn't get blown off target very much and travels over a long distance. In the conventional type, the foam diffuses like a fog. Yet with the improved model, the fire extinguishing liquid shoots out in a straight line and we can see that cones are lined up on the ground. It reaches the distant target without being wasted. A newly developed nozzle is what makes this possible. The internal structure was redesigned so that only fire extinguishing fluid in the central part mixes with air to make foam. This creates a jet with a two-layered structure of foam covered by liquid, making it difficult for the foam to be blown away by wind. This method is expected to greatly improve fire extinguishing capability. The new design seems like a big improvement for controlling the foam. Could you tell us how does the foam extinguish fire in the first place? Well, to answer that, we need to understand how a fire occurs. Fire happens only when four elements are present. These are fuel, oxygen, heat, and chemical chain reaction. So all four of these are needed for a fire to start. Yes, first is fuel. If there is nothing to burn, a fire will not start. 
The second is oxygen. Fuel will not burn without oxygen in the air. The third is heat. Even if fuel and oxygen are present, the fuel will not catch on fire without a high enough temperature. The fourth is a chemical chain reaction. The heat generated is transferred to fuel and oxygen that have not yet burned, which leads to a chain reaction of further combustion. So the fact that fire needs all four elements means removing any one of them would extinguish it. Correct. That's why reducing the heat with cooling water is the most common extinguishing method. This is because there is plenty of water and it is very effective at removing heat. I see. So which element was removed by the foam that we saw earlier in the video? When foam is put on an oil fire, it floats above the oil and blocks access to oxygen. This will extinguish the fire and the method is called smothering. I see. So there are various ways to putting out fires depending on the situation. But if this was after an earthquake, for example, I imagine there would be so much chaos and it would be difficult to obtain water or the foam agent. It probably would. That's why a breakthrough technology is now being developed precisely for times when there is neither water nor foam. Take a look at this. A fire truck to tackle this problem has now been developed. What it uses as a fire extinguishing agent is none other than air. This equipment makes that possible. It has 25 containers, each with a special membrane inside called a nitrogen separation membrane. Let's see how it works. From the air gathered at the site, oxygen is removed, leaving behind air with a high concentration of nitrogen. This nitrogen-enriched air is what extinguishes the fire. How is it that only oxygen is separated? Looking inside, we see that the nitrogen separation membrane is made up of many tubes, like thin straws. What's important is this material, a resin called polyamide. One of the properties of polyamide is that it's especially easy for oxygen molecules to pass through, even among gas. This polyamide is made into a straw-like shape and oxygen separates out as air passes through. Meanwhile, since nitrogen and other elements remain, air with a significant concentration of nitrogen can be obtained. We experimented with a miniature version of the fire truck to see how it actually extinguishes a fire. Its fire extinguishing capability is just one five hundredth of the full-size vehicle. Air with a lower concentration of oxygen fills the room from the part on the left side of the screen. An oxygen concentration of about 17% is required for combustion. However, since this air keeps the oxygen concentration at 12.5%, the candles cannot burn. This concentration also has little impact on the human body, making it safe for firefighters on site. What led to the development of this system was the Great East Japan Earthquake. Fire extinguishers that can be used for a long time are necessary in large-scale disasters. Otherwise, we felt they would not be of much help. That was really the starting point. The biggest feature is the fact that the raw material is air, making it a fire extinguishing device without any environmental pollution whatsoever. This is very clever, but I assume it won't work outside where the nitrogen-enriched air would just dissolve into ordinary air. Well, that's why it's intended for use in buildings that are sealed off to some extent. How much fire extinguishing capability does it have? In the span of an hour, it's capable of sufficiently lowering the oxygen concentration to extinguish a fire in a five-story building, 
where each floor is 100 square meters. This makes it suitable for places where you wouldn't want to spray water, such as on precision equipment or computers. It would be appreciated in places like museums, too. Yes, this technology could be useful in fire prevention. It could keep works of art from catching on fire by lowering the oxygen concentration beforehand. That sounds like a great idea. Let's hope the technology will continue to develop further and save the lives of many people.